Hey guys, in my last video I introduced my new mill pan and stand for the G0704 milling machine and I went over the construction of the stand. In this video I'll go over construction of the pan and if you check the description of this video or my last one, there's a link to a PDF where you can download a copy of my plans. They're completely free so use them however you like. For the pan I went with 7 16 plywood for the sides and the front and back and then 7 16 OSB for the floor. The only reason was I happened to have enough plywood on hand to do the front, back and sides and the OSB for the floor was the cheapest option. 7 16 material all around, but if I were going to go with this, if I were going to buy material to do the whole project, I would definitely go with the plywood. I don't think the OSB is going to be strong enough to be used as the front and back because those are the real structural strong parts of the whole assembly. I didn't capture any video or pictures of my putting it together, and I'm sorry about that. But you can see from this shot, it's pretty basic. I used construction adhesive on all joints, and then I nailed it together with a brad gun using inch and a quarter 18 gauge brads. There are, there's no brads, nails, screws, biscuits, or other joinery between the three pieces of the flooring. All I did was fill in the gaps with the construction adhesive, and then I really think a lot of the strength is going to come from this epoxy resin. Uh, I really was on the fence about using epoxy, but it seemed like in the end this was the only way to guarantee a leak-proof, strong, durable pan. And so, unfortunately, it's going to cost you a little bit of money. This is West System. Uh, resin and hardener 105 resin 205 hardener very high quality stuff I found it on a lot of boat builder forums I actually came across it by reading the CNC cookbook blog and then the cheapest place that I could find uh, To get it was actually at a local store a hundred bucks for the gallon of resin 50 bucks for the quart of hardener It seems like prices online were about the same and then I was gonna have to pay shipping on top of that now you could probably get away with going with a quart of the resin and I think the hardener comes in a smaller amount like a pint but I was nervous that that wasn't going to be enough material. And then also, it's not like because you're buying a quarter of the material, it costs a quarter of the amount. It ended up being a little bit cheaper, but not a lot. So I decided to play it safe. I went with the gallon in the quart. I have, a, I have quite a bit left over, but supposedly it has a pretty good shelf life. So I think I'll be able to use it for future projects. You want to mix this stuff thoroughly. I mixed for one minute and I timed myself. And you can either weigh it out or you can pour it by volume. It's five parts resin to one part hardener. For each coat, it worked out perfectly. I used 500 grams of resin and 100 grams of hardener, and I was able to do an entire coat of the floor and the inside walls of the pan. I used a cheap two inch brush uh, per coat, and I spread that on after just kind of pouring it in place. And then I used a six inch, three eighths nap roller, paint roller, to try and smooth it out. In reality, I don't think that roller is all that necessary. I think if you went with maybe a two inch and a four inch brush, you'd be able to do the job. And the reason is when you spread it out thin, the cure time actually gets longer. So per coat, I was looking at about eight hours a cure time uh, for each coat. If you leave it in that bucket, it will cure very fast and very, very hot. So that's why you wanna mix it for a minute and then use it immediately. You'll notice part of my pan is a lot bumpier than the rest of it. And I think that's because I actually spent a lot of time on my first coat messing with that 3 8 uh, nap roller, trying to get it really smooth. I didn't realize it was gonna be an eight hour cure time and it was gonna self level. So you don't wanna overwork the material. And also that's why I think you don't necessarily need to go with the six inch roller. You could just do it all with brushes. I tried to dry sand it with my orbital sander. I had made an attachment in the past so I could hook it up to a small shop vac but I was really making slow progress. And then I read online that you're supposed to wet sand this stuff. And with a 250 grit, or maybe it was a 400 grit, somewhere in there, sandpaper, when you're wet sanding, it really cuts the epoxy fast. And so after it's cured, you're able to sand in between coats quite well. So what I would do is blow off your uh, the wood, get it really clean and dry, uh, make sure it's dry, and then do your first coat, let it cure, sand it, uh, clean it, let it dry, do your second coat, sand it, etc. And then after my last coat, I also sanded it before painting. And you'll see here, it came out pretty dang smooth. I wasn't trying to go for a super glass finish. First of all, because I didn't want to sand through a bunch of it and then have to do additional coats, but also because I don't really think it's that critical that it comes out super glass-like. I also don't have any pictures of my applying the paint, but I'll tell you about it. It's a high gloss, agricultural grade, oil-based acrylic. I bought this at a tractor supply type store. And if you're buying paint at a place that sells premixed colors like John Deere green, Kubota orange, Ford blue, then you're on the right track. This stuff was about 18 bucks a quart, which wasn't the cheapest, but it wasn't super expensive. 
And I felt like it did a really good job. The high gloss will make it easier to clean. And it turned out really hard and durable. Because it's an oil-based paint, there ended up being about 24-hour cure time per coat, which I didn't think about that when I was buying it. But oil-based paints take a very long time to dry. You could also go with like a latex-based paint. I don't think that's going to be quite as durable, but some people have used latex and uh, it's turned out pretty good. So maybe do some testing, buy a little bit of a couple of different kinds, see what you like. I think the latex is also probably cheaper and the dry times are a couple of hours instead of a day. So that's going to be kind of nice. Uh, I think there was something else I wanted to say about the paint, but I can't remember what it is. Nope. So for drilling the holes, I went with 3 8 hardware because that seemed to fit nicely in the slots milled into the base. And then it's just grade five. Uh, the place I buy hardware from, all the all the uh, bolts come black. I don't know why that is. I've never bought bolts like this from any other place. And then I just used a 3 8 washer under the bolt head. And then on the bottom side, I, bottom size, bottom, I can't say it, bottom side, I used these uh, 5 16 fender washers, which are a much larger diameter washer on the outside. And then I use nylocks because they're going to allow the whole thing not to back out. You could use lock washers and regular nuts if you prefer, but I like nylocks in non-heat applications, so that's what I went with. I wanted to space my mill up off of the pan so that uh, chips and coolant could drain underneath it. Chips can get down on the inside of your base. Uh, and coolant. So you'll need a way for that to drain out. And also I didn't want to try and seal all the way around the perimeter of the base. So by spacing it up on these three eighths half inch, uh, three eighths aluminum uh, pads, I was also able to give myself, I think a little extra insurance as far as sealing it goes. So I used, this is black Permatex silicone. You don't want to use silicone caulk. It has some type of acid in it that actually aids in rust, uh, rusting steel. This Permatex is the type of silicone you buy at all your auto parts stores and it does not rust steel and that's why they use it on engines and axles and things of that nature. I put a ring of it around each hole in the pan and then a ring of it around the hole on the aluminum itself. That way I just got a nice, you know, thick amount and then I didn't put any additional on the bolts or in the groove on the uh, base. That was it, but I did a bunch of testing and I haven't had a drop of a leak. I mean, no leaks at all and it turned out really good. If I had made my mill a little bit, or my mill stand a little bit shorter, I probably would have actually went with a half inch spacer instead of three eighths, just so I could allow myself a little extra uh, coolant to puddle up in the bottom of the pan. But this ended up working, and like I say, no leak, so I'm really happy with it. I have to say overall, I'm very pleased with the entire project. The whole thing came out really heavy, really sturdy, really stable, not subject to vibrations. I don't know, really glad I made it, and hope you guys enjoyed watching the videos. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you get a chance. Thanks for watching.